Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Wait, show us your signs. Oh, you're in the shade. Oh, is it better? Yeah, I guess the blue is perfect. Uh, we're at Broadway Stages in Greenpoint in Brooklyn, standing in solidarity with WGA writers um, on their writer's strike for fair compensation. Um, and fairness. <laughs> We're gonna talk to some people. No kings, no masters. So. All right, everyone. As you can see, we're in, on Broadway stages in Brooklyn, Greenpoint to be specific. We are currently at the WGA strike. Here, supported by SAC AFTRA, this particular picket. There's pickets all around the block. Greenpoint has a couple of different stages. And this one, this particular business, Broadway Stages has several entrances to these giant studios. I've been inside here before, I've worked there before. You know, it's, it's a complex. So the pickets have to be spread out. We got a picket over here, we got, a pick, we got two or three pickets on the other side of the block. And there's other pickets happening in New York right now. There's one happening at Silver Cup in Queens, Long Island City. There's all kinds of stuff happening all over town. At this very moment, Rebecca is grabbing iced coffees so that we're fueled up. And when she gets back, we're going to interview a couple people from right here. So I am not a member of the WGA. I am not in a union. But from what I understand about how picket lines work, if there's just two people in a picket line walking back and forth in front of a stage of any kind, no other union members will cross it. So there will be no load in, none of that. But if there's nobody standing here, there's nothing stopping people from working and they have their obligations to their employers. So, that's why you see the protests walking back and forth in front of the doors. They'll just keep going and they'll just keep going so long as the productions want to keep running. Apparently, Matt Damon is inside working on his new film. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the film's about or anything about it, but I know that they're trying to get this bus inside this is a prop bus, a prop public bus, and that was supposed to be in there, and it's not. So let me just let me just pivot this over so you can see that bus. There's the back of it. There's the back of that bus. That's that's right. You think we can go inside it? I'm gonna step it. I'm gonna step inside the bus. There's there's somebody in here. There's somebody in there. I'm a writer. Uh, I write for scripted drama. Um, and I'm out here today because we need a fair contract. Um, many rooms are squeezing the size of writers' rooms, so it's undermining our safe, secure, middle class union jobs. There are fewer of them because of many rooms. Uh, we need staffing requirements to try to reboost uh, the size of the rooms. They're, they're asking us basically, many rooms basically ask us to do uh, the same amount of work with less time and fewer writers. So it's not fair. That's one piece of it. The other is AI. AI is an existential crisis, not just for us, but for all the unions in the industry, and not just for our industry, but for all the industries. And so every single union and everybody who's concerned about AI needs to come in and say, not in my business, and I can't let a robot take my job. What are some of the ways um, being a member of the union has helped you? How do they support you, not just through the strike, but when the strike isn't going on? Uh, the union is where I get hey, health and pension benefits, um, so I can look forward to someday retiring and not have to work um, all my life like a lot of non-union people, which is tragic and unfair, and I 
wish for every worker to be unionized. Um, but it also, the point of the union is to also protect me from my job being automated and gig economized away. So <clears throat> the strike is how I demonstrate my anxiety about that and my support for all of us to not have that happen to our jobs. But the union's job is to go into these negotiations and protect us from having that happen. And they've been brilliant doing so and they have my full backing and support. And Look at the people out here. Look at all the other unions out here. What else do you need to know? It's a genuine concern. So that's what the unions are for, to protect us. Yeah. And what would you say to people that aren't writers, aren't involved in the entertainment industry, aren't in unions that want to help? <laughs> well, first of all, just feeling the support, just thinking the, thinking the support. We've been having cars honk. It reminds us people are on our side and people get it and people care about their shows and they care about humans telling their stories. Go figure. Um, so that's... Just, just visual support has been helpful. But come on down to the picket line. Uh, people have sent cookies and donuts, and you don't even have to send anything. Just show up, shake our hand, and let us know you're on our side. And then there are other pragmatic ways. Um, if you're online, if you're on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or any of the others, um, amplify writers' voices when we say, we're picketing here, or um, we need your support there, or we need this kind of an action. Um, amplify, retweet, um, repost, let us know you're paying attention and that you're helping our message get out there. And another one is in theory, if anybody feels like canceling a subscription, hit the CEOs where it hurts, which is their bottom line, and that's your subscription. Is there anything else you want people to know? Um, we love our job. We want to go back to work. We did not want this strike. I didn't want this strike. No one on this picket line wanted this strike. All we want is to sit at home and think of ways to make you out there laugh and to make you on the, sit on the edge of your seat. All we want is for you to enjoy your TV because we know it's your time of the day where you can just unplug. That's all we want to do. We've dedicated our lives to it. So the sooner we can get back to work, the better. The studios are remaining obstinate and as long as they're doing that, we can't do our jobs and you can't have the TV you love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for covering this. I can't tell you how important it is to be covering yeah, of this. Course. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. I've never seen the show before, but I think I recognize some of the people I know. I don't really watch TV, but I support the TV makers. I'm not caught up with anything. Any, anybody, anybody here a TV watcher? Not me. Sorry. It's because I'm in solidarity. That's why I don't watch TV. Right? Is that how that works? Don't forget to follow and drop a message. Say hi. This feels like an episode of Russian Doll. Protect residuals, not CEOs. Do the right thing. Writers are everything, everywhere, all at once. There's some great signs here. Um, I'm Omar Shockett, member services manager at the Writers Guild of America East. Like, What are some other things besides strikes that WGA does to support writers throughout the year? Yeah, so we provide health insurance for our writers, which is huge. We kind of send out, give them their residuals, and we so we provide programming and help them with workshops. So in my old department, we ran a showrunner program, which was kind of training upper level writers to become showrunners. So we'd have existing showrunners come in every week and kind of teach them skills in show running um, because that's something that's not really taught it's learned and so and there's actually like a limited amount of showrunners in the east which leads to a limited uh, amount of showrunners working here so it's kind of to expand the pool of showrunners and bring more tv to new york a lot of these companies are reaching record profits and writer pay hasn't kept up at all um, and there's a lot of loopholes now with streaming. We've seen writer's rooms shrinking in size. You'll have a mini room, which is a term that's thrown around a lot. And a mini room is essentially writing an entire season in a much concentrated amount of time. So our writers get a lot less pay and might not make their minimums for health insurance. So you have four or five writers writing an entire season of television, and then the showrunner needs to go out on their own and do the show without having the writers around and writers come on set. Because of mini rooms, you have less writers with on-set experience um, because they aren't hired throughout the filming process. And now we have uh, this rise of AI and this conversation of AI writing the first draft of scripts 
and potentially having our writers do revisions on those scripts for a lesser rate. Um, so there's just a ton of issues in terms of finding ways to pay our members less and to effectively slowly eliminate the, the roles of writers over the next few years. And what would you say to somebody who's not a writer, not a part of WGA that wants to help, especially someone who might not be able to actually make it out to a strike? I'd say any sort of signal boosting on social media. When people report that certain shows are shutting down to realize why they're shutting down, you know, writers aren't trying to end your favorite shows or stop them from happening. We're trying to make an impact where it matters um, because we're an industry of people who love this so much that we decided to dedicate our lives to it. So we just want solidarity, understanding. We want your shows to come back. We just want to be paid an adequate amount for it. Um, if you want to cancel your streaming services, you can. But I understand that people love their Netflix. Uh, they just need to pay us more. Um, is there anything else that you want to say? Um, no, I just think that, I guess, yeah, um, this seems like it might last a long time. This strike could be longer than some people might imagine, um, and I would just like everyone's continued support. I know it's really easy to be supportive of pop, but it's a matter of sticking with it, and we're only going to win this with the solidarity of other unions and supporters around the world. So. Just keep supporting us and understanding where we're coming from. We're just asking for a livable wage for to continue our health insurance and to kind of just be paid what we deserve. Hey, I'm Melanie. I'm in uh, Central Brooklyn DSA. As a non-writer and a non-WGA member, why are you out here um, showing solidarity with writers and how did you kind of just get plugged into the efforts? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm here today because the corporate greed that's preventing these writers from being paid fairly is the same corporate greed that prevents us from having trains that come on time. It's the same corporate greed that, you know, increases tuition. It's the same corporate greed that makes uh, our city more and more... Uh, yeah! Woo! Sorry, a little live uh, solidarity there. It's the same corporate greed that uh, prevents New York from being livable for the working class. So that's why I'm out here today with uh, the WGA. And what can you tell the other people that might want to get involved? What are some good ways they can do that? Solidarity can happen uh, all across the country. You know, whether it's uh, joining a picket line here, it's really fun, the vibes are good, there's, you know, free food, who doesn't love that? And then if you're somewhere else, you can, uh, you know, follow along on social media, get your organization to take photos and post about the strike and why it matters to you. So. I think there's plenty of ways to do it, and uh, it's a great time to get plugged in. Come out to the picket line. It's a good time. Yeah. Thank you. How do you feel about what we did today? I think we did good. I mean, I'm going to be out tomorrow. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Okay. Ending stream. <laughs>